Hello everyone. This is our video lecture series for Psychic Learn Hybridry. This first lecture revolves around what Psychic Learn is. Psychic Learn is a state of art Python module which can be used for machine learning purposes. Now it is a very powerful, useful as well as a robust library. Now it can be used for machine learning as well as for statistically modeling purposes. This library is majorly written in Python and is built upon NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. Now there are various features of this library. Let's go through them one by one. The first feature of scikit-learn is supervised learning algorithms. Now, as the name itself says, there is a supervision that has that happens here. Now, let us take a very simple example. Imagine that you are sitting in an examination hall and there is an invigilator who supervises you. Similarly, we have labeled data over here which supervises the training of the model. So the types of supervised learning algorithms can be classification and regression. Thereafter, we have unsupervised learning algorithms. As the name itself says, and it is unlike supervised learning, here we don't have labeled data set. We have all the unlabeled data and the learning has to happen from the scratch. So the types of supervised learning can be clustering, and what clustering, which is a third feature is, clustering is grouping the unlabeled data that we have. Thereafter, we have cross-validation. Now, cross-validation is used to check the accuracy. It is an evaluating predictor that we have. So the process that happens is in cross-validation is that we divide our data into K folds. So folds here is basically groups and the terminology that is used in cross validation is folds. So we have to decide a number K and we divide our data into equal K divisions. After doing this, what do we do is we keep one fold on a side and other folds are merged together to make the training set. Thereafter, we perform the modeling and we learn the parameters and then we get the performance. We store this performance keeping that this fold was kept aside and all these folds were merged together. Thereafter, what do we do? We keep another fold aside and merge the rest of the folds and again learn the performance. Similar this way, we do for all the folds and at the end, we come up with a summary of the performance that we are getting. Now, how is this important? Um, let us understand using a real world ex uh, example. In case, uh, let's take the example of house price prediction. In house price prediction, all the data points are either into the unseen data or the seen data. So in cross-validation, what happens is that every house is used in the unseen data. And this is how a model is strongly built. And that is why cross-validation is important. Then we have dimensionality reduction. Now, this is used for reducing the number of attributes in data, which can be further used for summarization, visualization, and feature selection. So dimensionality reduction is commonly done in visualization purposes so as to get the object of importance. Then we have ensemble methods. So as the name itself suggests, it is used for combining the predictions of multiple supervised models. Then we have feature extraction. It is used to extract the features from data to define the attributes in images and text data. Thereafter, we have feature selection. So not all the features that have been given in a data set can be important. At times, we might need only a specific number of features so as to perform the task that we have been performing. And this method identifies useful attributes to create supervised models. The ninth feature 
of scikit-learn is open source. Now, this is the GitHub repository of scikit-learn. You can always go ahead and have a look at this. It supports open. It supports open source contribution, and as you can see, there are a lot of files over here, a lot of contributors, the languages, and this is the whole readme document. Always make sure that while you are contributing open in open source, there is always a method that the repository will ask you to follow so as to follow the so as to contribute. Now. The dependencies in installation of scikit-learn is Python, as we had even discussed that it is majorly written in Python and it is built on NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. So these are the dependencies that it has. This is something that you can take the post-lecture task and explore it too. Thereafter, scikit-learn supports quite a lot of data sets. So these are the data sets that it follows. It has Boston house price data set, iris data set, then diabetes, breast cancer, California housing data sets. A number of data sets have been uh, supported in this so that you don't have to externally load the CSV file. It does that for you. Now, one important point before moving forward is that a data set is a collection of data, right? So we'll be having features and response. Now features are the variables of the data and response is the output variable that is basically depends on the feature variables. And it is also known as the target names. One of the important data set that is very famously known is Iris plant data set. We'll be looking forward to this. Now it has 150 data points and there are four numeric predictive attributes and the classes. So as this says, there's 50 in each of the three classes. So the classes are Iris Centosa, Iris Versicolor, and Iris Vergerica. And the four numeric predictors are sepal length in centimeter, sepal width in centimeter, petal length, and petal width. We'll be working forward with this and in today's introductory class, what we'll be doing is that we'll be loading the data and then we'll be doing the train and test it. So let us have a run through with it. So from sklearn.data set, we will import load right and thereafter under iris i load iris now let us see first of all what this type of iris Okay. So this is the type of iris that has been coded. Now, I before splitting the data, I have to divide it into the features and target. So how do I do it as into X? I write iris dot data. Okay, this is because of the autocorrect that I have installed, and thereafter in Iris we have target as we had discussed. Now let's see what are the points under X. So these are the four attributes that we had discussed, the petal length, petal width, sepal length, and sepal width. So these are the attributes. And if we see the target values, so these are the target values. Since there are three classes, so zero is for Sentosa, Setosa, then Versicolor, and the third class for two. This is how uh, we are doing. And 
let us see the length of x so as we had discussed there are 50 uh, 50 in each and thus we have three classes thus it makes 150 data points now next what we are going to do is we are going to train and train the split uh, train split So for this, what we do is that from SK long, we import model selection, right? And import train text. How do we do it? Is we write X train as we have to split into uh, train and test set. So X train. X test, Y train, and Y test. Thereafter, we write train and test split. Then we have to write the arrays that we want to split. So we have X, then we have Y, then we have to set the size, right? So the test size, let me just keep it as 0 0.3. So if my test size equals to 30%, then my train size will be 100 minus 30%, which is 70%. And let me take the random state. State as one. All right. So what do I do now is that I print X train dot shape. So this is the shape that we are getting. So the 70% of the data that makes 105 data points and we have four attribute values. So this is the shape that comes. Uh, thereafter, let me print X test dot shape. And the 30%, which accounts to 45, and the four attribute values. Similarly, let me just copy this and write it over here, and we'll have Y chain. So Y chain, as the as it is just one array of uh, values ranging from zero to two, we'll be having one zero values over here. And similarly, Y test. Of 45 values now there is always before doing this how did i know that these are the parameters so you can always go through the website documentation that officially is available one of the shortcut method is that you can place your cursor over here and press shift tab so this window opens thereafter what you can do is press this thing and the whole documentation opens so the different parameters that train and test split takes are the arrays that we have entered, X and Y. Then we have test size, which is 0 0.3. Then we have train size. Now it is very well taken that if my test size is 0 0.3, then my train size will be taken as 0 0.7. You can mention any one of them. Then we have random state. Now, why is this random state important? Is because this random state provides you a seed value. Right, and this seed value ensures that all the random numbers are presented in the same order. Then we have shuffle. So shuffle itself, the name itself tells us that the values are shuffled. But as a post lecture activity, I will want you guys to write in the chat box, which we will even discuss in the next video, that why is shuffling important. So this is the whole documentation that is available here. And they have very well explained that what all these different parameters are, as well as they have even taken an example and helped us to understand that how is it working. So they have imported NumPy, sklearn model selection. Then this is the value that is going into X and this is our Y and they have split it as 0.33, the rest goes to the train set. And this is what my train set is. 
and this is how my y chain is and this is how my test set is and this is my y test so that is all for today hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll continue with further topics in the next video